Hi, welcome everyone. We'll get started in just a minute. Hi, Liliana. Tudo bem? Bom dia, Lilian. How are you? You're on mute. Okay, if everyone's ready, we'll go ahead and get started with the webinar. Okay. Um, Welcome everyone. My name is Sarah Carr. I am Chief Knowledge Broker for Octo, Open Communications for the Ocean. Uh, we're very pleased you could be with us today. Um, for today's presentation is on assessing MPA resilience, an introduction to RSAT, the resilience self-assessment tool for marine protected areas. Um, the way that today's webinar is going to run, we're going to have Jean-Jacques Goussard from the Ocean Governance Project, um, who's going to be presenting the bulk of the, the initial presentation today. And then afterwards, we'll also hear from Lillian Wetzel, who is also with the Ocean Governance Project and the NEMA organization in Brazil. And um, Matthew de Croque, who is president of the Technical and Scientific Committee uh, of the West African MPA Network. And also Mike DeLuca, who is manager of the Jacques Jersey in the US. So, but we'll get started with Jean Jacques. And then after all the um, presentations, we'll have time for questions from you guys. So I wanted to, if, when you send in questions, if you just want to send them straight to us as the panelists and presenters, you can put them in the question and answer panel. If you had something you wanted uh, to share with everyone in the webinar, we do. you can use the chat functionality and you can chat with everyone on the webinar. And we encourage you to send in information you have or relevant thoughts on what's being presented. We just ask that if you're, uh, that you keep it professional, anything you put in the chat and keep it on the topic. But we encourage you to use that as well for sharing resources you may know of or, or thoughts. And then uh, questions you want send directly to us. Just go ahead and put them into the question panel. Um, and thank you for being here today. I will turn it over now to Jean-Jacques. Thank you very much. Good morning or good afternoon. Good morning to everyone. Uh, my name and thank you very much for making time uh, to attend this webinar. Uh, you will excuse my English. It's, it's not perfect as I'm French. But uh, we will try to uh, to explain and to show a little bit to showcase uh, what is our work developing the resilience self-assessment tool. I'm coordinating the resilience partnership, and this partnership has been created uh, within the framework of the EU, the European Union Ocean Governance Project. This project is working. Uh, started with the Atlantic Basin, with countries of the Atlantic Basin, that means South America, Africa, Europe, and uh, Northern America. But now we are working also with in Southeast Asia, with uh, restoration works that are uh, undertaken and, uh, in the coral triangle between uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Philippines. And also we the number of partners is growing very, very fast. And we have partners in Africa, in the Indian Ocean, and in other uh, regions. So I will start uh, showing the PowerPoint, just one minute to share the screen. Okay, we're seeing it now. Okay. You, you just want to put it in presentation mode. Uh, it, it isn't well. Yep, now it no, is perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. So, uh, this webinar is a presentation of the resilience uh, self assessment tool. And the purpose of this tool is to uh, provide support to MPA managers in order to improve resilience oriented management. And we are especially addressing rapid change. 
Uh, this uh, Resilience Partnership has been launched in uh, 2016 by the EU Transatlantic MPA Network Project, working in all uh, the area of the Atlantic Basin with 11 historical MPA partners in Brazil, in Gabon, in Mexico, in Portugal, in Senegal, and in the US. The objective was to share experience, but especially good practice related to two points. The first one were the strategies implemented by MPAs to cope with rapidly changing environments. And the second were the approaches developed by MPAs to contribute to resilience of surrounding total zones, total areas. We are uh, taking into account different causes of rapid change, climate change, urban sprawl, weakness in land use planning, and, cost. and uh, facing this uh, change, management of MPAs must be adapted. Uh, our objective is to provide MPA managers with tools, such as the resilience self-assessment tool to assess and to monitor MPA's resilience-oriented management capacity, is to take also into account some key factors that are generally not considered in management effectiveness framework. Before to develop, to start the development of this tool, we have been doing a revision, a review of all existing or the main existing management effectiveness evaluation, evaluation package. And really the criteria we were willing to address were not included in this package. So this is the reason why we started developing this tool. Uh, the third point is to contribute to the improvement of, uh, of management plans, uh, providing guidance to reinforce resilience capacity of MPAs. Some words on our main partners. Uh, one was located in Portugal, it is the North Littoral Natural Park. And this uh, marine and coastal protected area has been created at the beginning as a natural infrastructure to defense and to protect the city. But after that, uh, they have seen that the creation of this MPA has been leading to many interesting developments regarding uh, land use, regarding uh, also uh, the touristic attractivity of the site. And so that means that uh, uh, protecting natural infrastructure can lead to many other developments. Another uh, partner, initial partner was in Gabon. Uh, Mathieu Ducro, who is here as a panelist, uh, has been uh, leading this uh, project at the moment. And there, uh, it's a very specific situation because Libreville, the capital city of Gabon, is the only capital city of all the Atlantic basin that is surrounded by three marine protected areas. You, at the center of this picture, you have the city and the green areas at the south and at the north and northwest are marine protected area. And in uh, yellow, in orange, you see a mapping of the areas of recent spontaneous urban expansion. So uh, during this project, the National Agency for National Park has been developing a territorial survey in order to understand well the dynamics of this expansion. And finally, other ministries such as uh, Urbanism Ministry and others has been requesting the help of the National Park Agency in order to uh, strengthen the management of this uh, totally uh, anarchic, anarchic uh, dynamic expansion. In this place, you have a remarkable biodiversity in these three uh, marine protected areas, but also irreversible impacts with uh, the urban sprawl. Another Partner is uh, ICM Bio in Brazil, in the south of Brazil. It is the ecological complex of Florianopolis. Talking about good practice, there they are really implementing a territorial management of conservation with uh, five federal protected areas, 
two provincial protected areas and 28 municipal protected areas. So, so it is a mosaic of conservation that is covering a large proportion of the territory of this uh, region. And uh, it is really a territorial management of uh, conservation. They are, fa they are facing a lot of pressure, such as irregular occupation, pollution. Uh, another partner is the Abrolios Bank uh, Marine Park in the in the south southwest no in the northeast of Brazil, and it is the main coral reef in the South Atlantic. And in uh, in uh, 2015, uh, the San Marco mud uh, there there were a dam collapse, and it was the worst mining accident in Brazil history. And the staff of the marine park has been uh, playing a very interesting role, interesting role of mediation to reduce the conflicts because there were a lot of conflicts after this accident and uh, between the state, uh, the cities, the municipalities, the fishers and all the actors. So they have been really playing a role of mediation in order to reduce the consequence of this conflict. Another partner is the Cozumel Biosphere Reserve in Yucatan, in Mexico. It is an island, it is a biosphere reserves, but also in this place, they are uh, facing impacts of climate change, invasive species, and they were, are receiving, before the COVID-19, COVID 8 million stories yearly. So the challenge was to manage this touristic pressure. So they have been involving in land use planning locally, and they have been working on the valuation of ecosystem service in order to feed the dialogue with local authorities and to convince that conservation was absolutely crucial in this place. They have been developing a lot of partnership with all the touristic operators. And finally, they have been uh, relatively successful in uh, controlling the touristic uh, pressure. And now what happened? Ah, yes. And the last uh, partner I will present is the Jacques Cousteau National Exploration Research Reserve. Uh, Michael De Luca is uh, one of the panelists of this webinar, and they are providing services to 48 municipalities because this region have been facing the Sandy Hurricane. Uh, and they are also implementing uh, the Sentinel Site Initiative. It is part of the National Australian Research Reserve of the uh, United States. And they have been developing all the process to improve the resilience of the municipality. Uh, first assessment, municipal assessment, municipal planning or, and preparedness, planning for public outreach activities and implementation recommendation uh, with uh, some priorities. They are providing tools uh, to be used by the municipalities for developing and building resilient land use planning. Uh, and uh, their approach is based on a community rating system, uh, hazard mitigation planning actions, and some uh, the municipalities that are working with the reserve are getting the municipal certification. Another in interesting characteristic of this reserve is the diversity of partnership they have been able to, to set up and to develop. And is a very interesting uh, characteristic. So based on, on this good practice, and we have been analyzing other good practice also, we have been working since uh, 2017 during workshop in different places in order to shape, to build the tool we will present. So the resilience self-assessment tool, uh, first I will present the resilience web platform. Uh, this web platform is currently under uh, an upgrade. We are upgrading it, but you can find some updated uh, scientific resource papers, some uh, resili the resilience good practice I was talking about, and you can access the resilience uh, toolkit uh, with the toolkit option, which is in the menu. Until now, the resilience self-assessment tool has been implemented 
in 56 marine protected areas in 16 countries. We hope that by before the end of this year, we will reach 80 or maybe 100 uh, MPAs. We have been uh, working and training around uh, 200 MPA managers in these uh, 16 countries. And uh, we are in the way now to uh, complete new trainings in order to increase the number of MPA managers that are able no, not only to use the tool, but also to train other people uh, for using this tool. So the toolkit includes uh, different elements. Uh, it includes the resilience guidelines that are still in draft, but we are uh, concluding a final version by the end of the year. Resilience FEQ, good practice, and the tool, the resilience self-assessment tool. This tool has been uh, based on uh, an analysis of uh, partner of good practice, an in-depth review of scientific literature, and uh, a detailed analysis on how resilience is already taken into account and feedbacks from managers using the tool. We have five families of criteria. The first one is uh, anticipation, awareness, and responsiveness. The second is the territorial integration of MPAs. The third, the MPA social and cultural integration. And the last one is the political and institutional resilience and knowledge management. Uh, in green, in light green, you see the criteria that are really innovative, uh, such as the capacity of anticipation by the managers, awareness, management responsiveness, and preparedness and recovery capacity. Uh, we have also the integration of MPA into land use, local land use planning and uh, some criteria on stakeholders and formalization of stakeholders engagement. The institutional resilience is also an uh, innovative criteria. The tool, to use the tool, you have a form, this form with closed questions and it's available online and offline. It's better to use the Excel offline because if uh, you have an interruption of your connection during the process, when you are online, it doesn't work. Uh, the user can decide if the data can be saved on the platform so they can be retrieved and compared. Uh, there is a possibility to export raw data from the online platform. Uh, each assessment has a unique ID and uh, it's better to do the assessment in presence of the management committee of the MPA and of the stakeholders. After this assessment, uh, we, build a, we build a roadmap of recommendation and uh, we will uh, capitalize all uh, the process we have been developing since uh, 2017 in, uh, and preparing a paper by next June. I will show you some patterns very quick, very quickly. Uh, this pattern is specific and uh, it is a, a reserve, uh, uh, an MPA which benefits from a strong support from uh, the umbrella administration. But it is a kind of vertical management that uh, is not so recommended for resilience adaptive management. This pattern is a comparison with the the online tool uh, between two assessments and uh, one year between the two assessments. And they are quite different, quite similar in one way and quite different in another way. Why? Because uh, this region has been facing important territorial change due to the, due to the construction of a bridge that, that uh, opens up one part of the MPA. So it's interesting because the tool is sensitive. This pattern it is, uh, has been realized during the update of a management plan of a very mature nat nat marine park. And it's a very complete pattern for a well-established marine park co-managed by stakeholders. And the last one is an insular marine and coastal protected area created and co-managed by fishers. So it's a very specific pattern because the management is oriented to sustainable fisheries activities. 
the IUCN and the NOAA has been published very recently the CCRAP tool. It is a climate change resilience adaptation planning tool. And uh, in this tool, in the form of this tool, they say that AirSat helps MPAs to integrate resilience to their management. And uh, they propose some uh, answers to, uh, to, to demonstrate that uh, the CCR app is totally compatible with AirSat and is really complementary with AirSat. Some lessons learned. Uh, AirSat broadens the scope of management efficiency to take into account resilience-oriented management through innovative criteria. The tool has proven to be very useful for the preparation and evaluation and update of management plan. Uh, the practice of resilience assessment provides real opportunities for debate on innovative questions and issues between MPA staff. And this is the reason why also it is important and interesting to do the assessment in presence with the management committee of the of the MPA. It establishes, uh, of course, a baseline of the, on the resilience oriented management to measure the progress. Other lessons learned, learned: if the assessment involves local actors and stakeholders, AirSat improves the dialogue and confidence between MPA managers and these local actors because when local actors are doing the assessment jointly with the manager of the MPA, they are really sharing the same concern and uh, discussing because every question has only one answer and sometimes people don't agree and they have to discuss and to debate in order to uh, decide what will be the answer. It improves co-management dynamic and uh, sometimes we identify shared weakness or strengths between different MPA, MPAs depending from the same umbrella institution. And in this case, it's very useful to understand uh, some weakness and to add the level of the umbrella, umbrella institution and not at the level of the MPAs. Uh, AirSat can be applied to OECM and strong protection zone, taking into account the 30 by 30 objective. And we are in the way to develop new tools. One tool, early stage AirSat, uh, especially for MPAs that are under the process of designation. And uh, AquaSat for aquaculture. This tool is already ready, but it's not implemented on the platform uh, for aquaculture farms. And also we are in the way to launch a global network of urban MPAs because the urban MPAs, it's really a topic, a new topic, and they are really coastal resilience laboratories. Uh, we also have a community of AirSat users and resilience. So you have in the chat, you have uh, the address of this community of AirSat users. You can subscribe, and you can also post your questions, more questions on this uh, community, community of users. I would like to remind the, the IUCN, IUCN WCC 2020 resolution 030 during the last Nature Congress in Marseille, uh, enhancing the resilience of coastal area in the face of climate change, because this, re this resolution is the first one tackling resilience issues. And in this resolution, uh, it is recommended that uh, MPA manager incorporate resilience into management plan and management effectiveness evaluation process. This, re this uh, resolution has been proposed by the government of Senegal with the support of eight uh, uh, of sponsor from eight uh, IUCN geographic region. So thank you very much. And I would like to give the floor now to uh, Mike De Luca. Uh, Mike. Okay, thank you, Sanjak. Uh, can we uh, go to the first slide or next slide? Yes, I try. What happened? My computer is not reacting. <laughs> ah, okay. But, okay. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Okay, um, again, my name is Mike DeLuca. I'm a researcher at Rutgers University, and one of my responsibilities is to manage uh, one of the 
the National Estuarine Research Reserve, the so Cousteau Reserve, uh, located in, in southern New Jersey. It's part of a national network of 30 reserves throughout the uh, USA that is uh, governed by a, a federal state partnership, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and either state uh, coastal zone management programs, or in uh, my case, in the case of a few other reserves, universities, Rutgers University um, in this case. Next slide. Next slide, John Jack. Yes, yes. Oops. We, there it is. Okay. So, um, as Jean Jacques has uh, mentioned, um, a lot of the um, interest in this tool has been to um, anticipate some of the um, changes that we're experiencing in the environment related to climate change in urban development. And so certainly that's true here in New Jersey. In the Mid-Atlantic region, we have uh, one of the highest rates of sea level rise uh, in, the, in the world. Um, and so uh, we're already experiencing uh, some of the impacts of that on our coastal ecosystems and communities. And this does influence a lot of the research that we're, uh, we're doing. And the tool itself has enabled us to um, take a step back and assess um, you know, our priorities and where we're doing uh, well, what our strengths are and areas where we need to put some more resources and time and effort uh, into. Next slide. Next, there we go. So a lot of the uh, um, funding for the research, technical assistance, education programs that we do through the reserve has been funded by NOAA in the partnership program that I mentioned, but also in response to Superstorm Sandy uh, in, in 2012, there's a lot of federal and state funding to enhance resilience of coastal communities and coastal ecosystems. And so our reserve received quite a bit of funding to begin to develop some web-based tools um, uh, that John jacques shared with you, uh, the Jer New Jersey flood mapper, getting to resilience. Um, and it's how we uh, got involved in this project. Uh, and we actually hosted the first ocean governance workshop back in 2016. So we've used the RSAT tool to you know, assess our strengths and vulnerabilities. Um, a particular um, uh, note is the fact that it's very helpful in informing our management plan, which has to be updated every five years uh, on, uh, for NOAA. That's a, uh, a key federal uh, requirement. So we're in the process of updating our management plan right now. And this tool is very helpful in help, uh, helping us to identify some of the future uh, research uh, priorities and investment areas uh, that we um, plan to make over the next uh, five years. The other thing that we've learned is that um, I mentioned there are 30 reserves um, in the national network or system. We have an additional three in the designation process right now. And one of the new criterion for uh, designation is to look at the resilience uh, of a site. And so the tool is very helpful in that regard. And I think it will all um, be uh, actually improved with the um, the RSAT tool that uh, Jean-Jacques mentioned for emerging or, or new sites. So uh, we found it very useful. Um, I actually am having a uh, train the trainers workshop next week in New Jersey for some of my reserve uh, colleagues. Jean-Jacques will be there. Lilian, who you'll meet in a moment, will be there as well. So it has a lot of application. We use it. And uh, I hope that uh, you know, this uh, webinar um, encourages you to take a, a deeper dive and look at this as well. I think that's my, that's it for me, Jean-Jacques. I don't think I okay. have a slide. Thank you very Thank much, you. Mike. Thank you very much. I would like to, to give the floor to Lilian Wetzel from uh, the south of Brazil. Okay. Okay, thank you, Jean-Jacques. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Lilian Vessel. Um, I'm a consultant in the Ocean Governance Project, and I have been working and will talk briefly to you about um, how we are actually engaging people in the RCERT um, uh, tool. So uh, we actually, um, our scope in the project is to provide managers with this tool, but how do we reach them? Uh, some people do get to know the, uh, the, the platform through open events like this one or through colleagues, friends, 
and um, they are all you are all very welcome. Uh, but we also work in a direct uh, approach, um, institutional approach, where we approach governments and NGOs. Uh, in different countries, so because both of them are seen somehow related to, to the management of protected areas. NGOs may have uh, be part of uh, management committees, and usually the governments are involved in the direct management of these areas. Um, both also have to do with uh, the execution and um, the development of public policies related to MPA management. And uh, NGOs have a particular role in putting pressure for the creation of new areas. So as Jean-Jacques mentioned and Mike, uh, we have this um, new approach for, for uh, areas under designation or in the pro, um, uh, prospect, uh, prospection period. We also have a personal approach because um, people sometimes just get um, uh, involved in this because of their personal interest. Um, they all have their lives affected somehow. So we try to, to reach this white public and we offer different opportunities for people to engage uh, in, the, in the tool. We usually offer uh, introduction webinars. So that's one point. We also have uh, deeper webinars where we discuss the resilience criteria and that's very productive. We offer guidance for, for MPAs that would like to complete the assessment with our present, with, with our mediation, especially when they're going through through it with their management committees. And we also have specific coaching for training of trainers events where we identify key managers that may take this process further and develop uh, training of uh, other managers in their regions. So um, once they get to, to RSAT, um, awareness become, uh, begins to develop and uh, the platform may actually reach its uh, goal of helping managers to make better decisions uh, and uh, make better informed uh, action, uh, even if sometimes it's no action, but uh, decide the better way to, to face the rapid changes within and around their areas. So that's our, our usual process of reaching um, people and uh, making the dissemination of our platform. So, so that's my, my brief message thank today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Liliane. Now I would like to, I will, uh, I will stop sharing the screen and I would like to give the floor to Mathieu Ducrot. Mathieu is a very experienced partner on you for using your site. Mathieu, thank you. Hello everybody. Uh, good afternoon, or good morning, depending on where you are. I'm happy to share a little bit with you my experience. Uh, concerning ERSAT. I have been since the beginning of the story uh, one of the, the representative, representative for one of the partners in Gabon and now I live in Senegal and I'm the chairperson of the scientific board of the RAMPAO, West African Marine Protected Areas Network and, and I work also with the, the Ministry of Environment and the Direction of Marine Protected Areas in, in Senegal who are all um, very committed to the promotion and, and the use of ERSAT. So I would like to share with you a little bit of, uh, of my personal experience on how you can animate and coach uh, an ERSAT evaluation session. Uh, this is something very easy. The tool is very uh, easy to use. Um, it's very easily understandable and uh, there are sometimes some questions of understanding about the, 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 the terms and the concepts, the notions that are uh, evoked by, by the tool, but it, uh, it has never made uh, a difficulty during a, a training session or during an evaluation session and, and even people who work um, in uh, field activities or stakeholders like artisanal fishermen don't meet uh, difficulties to understand how the tool works and what the questions are. Uh, so generally to organize a, a, an auto -evalu evaluation session, you should have a meeting room and, and you can have five, 10, 20 person around the table. Uh, I would uh, strongly recommend to organize this 
with the management team of the MPA, but also with representatives of the stakeholders, including uh, territorial management managers, uh, local government decision makers, mayors, because it's very important for them to have the opportunity to understand uh, how strong is the relationship that they have with the MPA and what are the mutual benefits um, that, uh, that can be achieved through the, the collaboration. This is part of the things that are uh, evaluated by the tool. And the tool, well, during the session, using the tool is always generating a lot of uh, discussion, a lot of, uh, uh, of debates. And, and the benefit of this uh, dialogue is almost as important as the, the results by, by itself. You, you generally take two up to three hours to have a complete evaluation plus discussion around the around the, the, the results. And um, what we've seen, I, I've been coaching more or less 15 uh, evaluation in different MPAs, uh, community-based MPAs, but also national parks, uh, also uh, very, very, community-based uh, MPA in shared governance or completely run by, by communities. And um, in, in each case, you have uh, very uh, interesting results that can lead to some changes of, uh, of habits, uh, some changes of attitude, of posture, um, by the management team, but also by the stakeholders sometimes. For example, in Senegal, in several cases, uh, we noted that the representative of, uh, uh, of the local territory, the, of the local government, um, was led to discover that he was systematically one of the stakeholders invited to the meetings, um, but that in fact, he, uh, the, the mayors were quite passive and not uh, proactively contributing to the development and the life of the MPA, why the MPA is providing many local benefits and finally is one of the pillars of the local development. And in several cases, uh, there are some interesting skips of attitude. Uh, and in the marine protected area of Bamboo, for example, where there is a, an eco-touristic uh compliment that was built years ago by a, a project uh the, the the mayor decided to put part of the money of the municipality to upgrade the um, the, the the ecotouristic camp um considering that uh, it was uh, uh, a strong uh, strongly attractive product to 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 bring the, the tourists to consider the municipality as an, a, an interesting destination. Uh, so uh, what should I say? Um, for marine protected areas in national parks that have, um, uh, uh, which are depending from a department or uh, a national direction, um, the results of the evaluations often show that there are possible um, progresses that can be made locally, uh, individually by, uh, by the MPA and by the management team, but some of uh, the, the obstacles and, and the progresses to, to be made uh, are situated at, uh, at the political level or at another level that can't be addressed directly by, by the MPA. So it's, uh, it's giving an objective uh, evaluation of uh, an identification of who is responsible for what kind of decision making, which is not always obvious and which is not uh, necessarily uh, highlighted by the classical management effectiveness uh, tools that are that are used to to assess the management of MPAs. Um, so, what's happening here in West Africa? The promotion of ERSAT is uh, one of the uh, one one of the technical programs of the the Rampao, the Wampan, West uh, African Marine Protected Areas Network, and uh, we are planning uh, a set of uh, trainings. 
And here in Senegal, the country has been very, very interested by the tool, which is now part of the official toolkit, uh, the official toolbox of um, uh, for the management uh, of, of uh, the national MPAs network. Uh, and we recently organized uh, together with Jean-Jacques a training of national coaches and we have 12 persons in Senegal which are now completely able to, to animate uh, an evaluation and to help organizing an evaluation in, in any MPA up to the point that uh, recently the, Maurit the, the, the Mauritanian uh, Diaoling National Park Ask the Senegal to send someone uh, among this uh, this team of uh, national coaches to facilitate the organization of an airsat uh, evaluation in in the Diaoling National Park, which is surrounded by very rapid development and which is trying to 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 build up its uh, resilience and the partnerships with the the surrounding uh, economic partners. So um, it's a new tool. But it's an easy tool, an interesting one, a very innovative one, which can open your eyes on things that you have not considered so far. It's not the same criteria that you usually use for management effectiveness evaluation, and it brings new perspective, new consideration about points that you uh, often don't see, but which are uh, interesting to, to consider, to strengthen the management and, and the resilience of, of your MPA. So happy to exchange again, to share any any view and, and to answer to your question. And uh, please try ASAT. You will spend good time and it will be interesting. Thank you very much, uh, Mathieu. I will give very briefly the floor to Mike. Mike has uh, one point to take a look. Yeah, thank you, Zanzak. I wanted to add uh, one key um, advantage of the RSAT tool to my comments, and that is, you know, as uh, the impacts of climate change impact uh, marine protected areas, we're seeing shifts in the range of coastal ecosystems and coastal resources. And that may lead, uh, in some cases, to uh, changes in boundaries or addition of areas that can um, enhance the resilience of, uh, of MPAs. And a good example is marsh migration. You know, marshes are, are um, uh, subject to uh, flooding due to sea level rise. And uh, there's a lot of interest in creating migration corridors. And that would uh, mean expanding the boundary of some, um, some MPAs. And so I think the resilience tool, the self-assessment tool can help to inform some of those um, decisions with respect to expansion and boundary changes in response to climate change. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. So we, we finished this presentation. Uh, thank you very much to everyone. And uh, I will uh, encourage the participants to join us uh, by the end of this, after the end of this webinar, we will uh, send uh, in the coming days uh, a mail to all the participants, uh, don't hesitate to contact us for more information, further information. We can organize uh, capacity building uh, workshop online. We have been doing it. And thank you very much. Sarah, I will give you the floor. Yes, OK, thank you. Let me share my camera again. Um, we had several questions, but also there was a request to see a demonstration of the tool. Um, is one of you able, to, and, and Lillian had mentioned there was a possibility for a demonstration exercise. Who would be sharing that? Yes, uh, we, yes we, can, uh, we can do a demonstration online. But, OK. Uh, just what would we like to go to that next? I have to. I have to. Um, Okay, so I will share my screen. Uh, 
Okay, well, great. It is a web platform. You, you see my yes. screen? Yes, we do. Yep. Thank you, Sean Chuck. Platform, but now I don't have the menu because I have the. Uh, I don't just a minute. Okay, toolkit. You go to toolkit. I choose English, the other language, uh, as we are in upgrade in a upgrade mode. Only the English is working now, and here you can choose to start a self-assessment, to retrieve data, to compare to assessment, or to start a demonstration. Start a self-assessment demonstration, so I go there. And I go to start. I will load the form. It takes some seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds. <laughs> Yes, okay. We have the form. Here, the answer has been responding uh, randomly because it is a demonstration uh, to respond to the question. You go there and you see, and after I click, I know the question is answered. So we have the five thematics with sub criteria, and after you have questions with different uh, possibility of response. Uh, well, it's a quite long uh, form, but as uh, Mathieu said, it takes between uh, one hour and a half to three hours to, to do the assessment. Once the form is filled, I come back, we go to result. Here you have the pattern, the graph. Other graph. After that, you have the percentage of maximal score for all the five, all the five uh, family of criteria. And after that, we have the score for the main criteria within each family. And after, you have all the questions with a different color according to the score. Uh, you obtain for each question. It is a percentage of the maximal score you can obtain. It's possible to print with a print screen. Uh, and after that, uh, there is uh, the last moment of the session, of the assessment session, is uh, to uh, analyze the results and to provide a set of recommendation and to build a roadmap for the application, the implementation of the recommendation. As the assessment doesn't take, it's not too long to do it. Uh, it's possible to repeat the assessment yearly or to also uh, with a comparison tool to compare two assessments, even if it is the same MPA one year and one year after, or two different MPAs. I cannot show you a real assessment because uh, we have a policy on the management of the confidentiality of the data. So we should need the agreement of the manager's uh, written agreement before to, to showcase a, a real assessment. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, Sean Chalk, and thank you all for your presentations. Um, uh, these were great to learn from your experiences using the tool. Um, I'll start with some of the questions. Um, one of the first ones to come in was, are there free online RSET trainings and workshops? On, uh, online training and workshops? Yes. Yes. Or we in person. Been, yes, yes. Now we have been organizing uh, two two uh, trainings, trainings of trainers online with uh, Brazil and with uh, Portugal. Uh, and the results are good, but really, it's really more interesting uh, to work face-to-face -face for the trainings because uh, the interactivity between the participants is better. And after that, uh, the trainings are developing in three sessions online, first session presentation of the tool. The second session is to discuss and to understand exactly what the criteria means. And the last one is to apply the tool. So it takes, it takes time because there are uh, three sessions of uh, one hour to one hour and a half. So it's uh, 
generally it's better to uh, to organize face-to-face uh, -face training sessions. Okay, thank you, Sean we, we can do it online. We can do it online. Okay. And we can find a shorter way to do it. <laughs> okay. That is less sessions. Um, I also posted another resource. We just, um, in conjunction with uh, the Ocean Governance Project and specifically the MPA resilience uh, work, we've started a discussion group called Marine Resilience, uh, which we hope to, one of the purposes will be to sort of discussion on using RSAT. So um, you were all asked when you joined the webinar, if you wanted to join that list, if you responded no and aren't part of it, I'd suggest going or contacting us that you would like to be a part of it, because that'll be another venue for um, discussing and getting questions answered about our set use. Mm -hmm. but, um, let's see, there's a number of other questions. We'll move on. Um, after doing the evaluation, what is a good general score to know how our MPA is becoming resilient? Is there a particular threshold? Well, it's it's complicated because you have uh, five different families of criteria, and every family is important of criteria. I show the one pattern, very complete pattern, and we think that really this uh, very old marine uh, park is very resilient. In fact, uh, because they they got very good score on the five dimensions of the resilience-oriented management. Uh, so may, ba basically, the most important is to create a link and to, to be interconnected with the stakeholders, communities, local communities is a very important point. The second very important point is the capacity of anticipation because the change are happening so fast that generally our capacity to react and to cope with this change uh, takes, uh, it is not as fast as a change. So generally, when we take decisions, there is a long time between the decision and the action. And generally, the context has been changing more during this, this time. So we are always taking decisions in late. And so the capacity of anticipation is uh, very precious and very uh, indispensable exercise and uh, to build building scenario and trying to think out the box and to think how will be the reality in five, in 10 years, in 20 years, in order to, to start adapt, uh, adaptive uh, measure on time, timely. Uh, uh, your your mute because I don't oh know. I'm so sorry yes thank you so much for that um, another question that's coming in and is I would like to ask if there's other similar tools and how this one is different how long does it take to implement is training needed for implementation not really not really it depends it depends the context it depends uh, uh, not not really. Uh, it's possible to uh, normally. It's possible to to download the form. You can download the form. Uh, you go to the toolkit on the web platform and you choose start a new start a self assessment, not not demo. Start a real self assessment, and on the page which appears at this moment, uh, you have the possibility to download the form in different language. So it's possible to download the form and to uh, do the self-assessment. And after that, to start a self-assessment on the web platform and to enter the data. And to input the data, it takes more or less five to eight minutes inputting all the data. I, uh, I think that it's really preferable, really better to work on the Excel form than to work on the online form better to fill the Excel and after that to input the data of the Excel on the online tool. So it's possible to do it alone. It's not necessary to, to be trained. Okay, thank you, Jean-Jacques. Um, and are there other similar tools and how would you characterize this one in relationship to well, those? We, we have, well, 
within the framework of the ocean governance project, there is a very similar tool and very good tool on marine mammals. How marine mammals are taken into account into the management of the MPA. It's a very good tool, and you can go to the to, to the platform. I will uh, uh, marine mammals dot info. I'll see if I can find that. And, it and is a, exactly yeah. exactly the same scheme of the resilience tool, but applied to marine mammals management management in MPAs. All right, I'll, 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 seek, I'll seek that out and post it for everyone. Um, thank you, John Chai. Um, another question that came in, um, is, is there a user manual available online? Uh, could you repeat, or oh, Mathieu, do you, do you want to respond to this question, or Mike? Yeah, I can, I can respond. Uh, yes, there is a... Uh, a user manual that helps um, guide users through the use of the, the tool. It's on the web platform that uh, Jean-Jacques um, uh, stated earlier. So uh, there's there's a how-to uh, manual available, absolutely. Okay, wonderful. And that's a great resource to have. Um, in, addition, in addition, I can say also that we are on the way to develop uh, tutorials with um, an explanation of the different criteria, sub criteria, an explanation of how to answer to the different questions. It's generally uh, multiple choices questions. And so there will be um, uh, I, I, some five, six, seven pages of uh, explanation, question per question, uh, for it to be more easy to, to be used by, by everybody. Maybe, uh, Sarah, one point that I would uh, add to uh, previous Jean-Jacques answer concerning uh, the question, what is the, the good rate? What is the good score for an MPA to be resilient? I, I'm not pretty sure that uh, this tool is able to, to decide when an MPA is resilient or not. It's an auto-evaluation tool. And what in, is interesting is that it's uh, making um it, it it's making uh, appearing uh, the the strength and the weaknesses and you know where you are good and you know where you are uh, weak and where you, where you should work and what are the particular points on, on which you can make progresses and successive evaluation every year or every two years uh, will be able to show to you your progresses and so it's essentially showing tendencies, essentially helping you to identify your, weakness, uh, your weaknesses and, and to show to you what are the, the pillars of the, the solidity of your MPA that you could con uh, continue uh, consolidating uh, along the time. But it's not uh, uh, something objective enough to be able to say your MPA is resilient or not. The, the evaluation... Uh... You, you get after with the ERSAT is more an evaluation of the quality of the management to cope with rapid change. That means the, prep, the level of preparedness of the, of the manager and the management of the MPA to cope with rapid change, even if there are climate change, due to climate change, due to the urban sprawl, due to the construction of a bridge, uh, all the rapid change that happen in the context of the MPA, uh, are you able to cope with? Okay, thank you both. Um, we have a lot of really excellent questions we're not gonna be able to get to, um, but we'll, we'll try and get to a couple more really quick. Um, one is, it seems that the assessment focuses on management or government resilience, but does not address ecological resilience. In common and current applications, do practitioners pair this with an assessment of ecological resilience? Yes, uh, it was very, uh, very difficult to, to, to at the beginning, we, we think that it was necessary to work at the level of ecological resilience. But for that, you already have many tools and many guides 
such as the COC, the Commission of uh, Environmental Commission uh, on, uh, on Resilient MPAs. You have many tools and it depends on the, geograph uh, on the geographic region you are, consider you are working. So uh, governance is more interesting because uh, these uh, criteria we use have never been used really. Uh, the anticipation capacity, for example, uh, it's, it's new in the world of conservation, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, it's interesting because the governance issue are really generic issues. If you work with MPAs in Africa, you work with MPAs in Asia, you will face the same issues. It's very comparable. And recently, uh, the European Union asked if it was possible to develop an uh, ERSAT for terrestrial protected areas. And I've been working on this question. And finally, there are no, no, many, no many change to apply in order that the tool can be used for terrestrial mar marine protected areas. So it is really the core indicators for resilience that are uh, addressed by this tool. OK, thank you. Um, we'll try and get to a couple more because they're really good questions. Um, are there any coral reef examples uh, where the tool has been used? Yes, in uh, Cozumel. In Cozumel, in Mexico, they, uh, they use the tool with coral reef. In Comoros, in the Indian Ocean, also. Uh, and I think because I, I don't have all the assessment in the mind, my mind, but uh, I think that we have uh, some other example, and we will have uh, soon more example with uh, coral reef uh, in uh, with South, Southeast Asia because in months of June we will develop a training of trainers in uh, in Indonesia. Okay, thank you. All right, the last question. Um, is there a stage of establishment of an MPA, sort of newer MPA or well-established MPA um, that the tool benefits the most? What has your experience been in this area? We think from our experience, it is useful at all the stage, but uh, uh, as Mike, uh, Michael said, it could be very useful at the stage of the designation of the MPA. And this is uh, when the MPA is, is under, the, under the creation process. So this is the reason why we think that we will develop a, a small uh, different tool, but it is the same. And uh, the name will be early stage uh, resilient self-assessment tool to be used for MPAs that are under the process of creation or designation. Okay, thank you, Jean-Jacques. And thank you so much to Matthew, Mike, and Lillian. Um, this was a great presentation. We unfortunately had a bunch of questions we weren't able to get to, but we have all those questions and I'll be providing all those questions to the presenters. And um, I would also encourage you if, if you wanna be put in touch with the presenters to act to yeah. talk to, speak to them directly, you can contact me and I'll put you in touch. Um, but thank you so, so much to you guys for presenting and also thank you so much to everyone who was able to attend today. Um, we'll, uh, you'll be hearing from um, Jean-Jacques and afterwards with in more information about our SAT and we really appreciate you, your interest in this. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. And thank, thank you everyone. You. So have a great rest of your day and we'll be in touch with more information about our SAT. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.